Good afternoon and welcome once again to our Holy Hour here at St. Joseph Catholic Church. This afternoon, as we spend time with our God, in the presence of our God, here in the Blessed Sacrament, let us remember in a special way all those who are unemployed, in particular those who have lost their jobs as a result of the shutdowns related to the pandemic. And we pray that they will have a speedy return to work and that people who have lost their jobs will once again know the dignity of human work, human labor. Yesterday was the anniversary of Earth Day, the 50th anniversary, and Pope Francis spoke about our environment during his catechesis yesterday. And for the first portion of our Holy Hour this afternoon, I thought maybe we would reflect on his teachings and reflect in a special way on some passages from his encyclical on care for the environment, care for God's creation, Laudato Si. And we will spend the second half of our holy hour in prayer, more formal, more well-known prayer to the Blessed Sacrament. So I invite you now to join in our opening hymn as we expose the Blessed Sacrament.
For divine Jesus, lonely today in so many tabernacles, without visitor or worshipper, I offer you my poor but loving heart. May its every beat be a prayer of love for you. You are ever watching under the sacramental veils. In your love you never sleep and are never weary of your vigil for sinners. O oh, good Jesus, I love you. I am truly sorry for ever having offended you. O oh, lonely Jesus, may my heart be as a lamp, the light of which shall burn for you alone. Bless me, O oh, Jesus. Come spiritually into my soul and fill my heart with love for you. Make me completely yours. Take this simple heart of mine and guide it through this veil of tears. Heart of Jesus, hear me. When I draw my parting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, then, sweet Jesus, be near me. Heart of Jesus, hear me. Watch, sacramental sentinel. Watch for the weary world, for the erring soul, and for your poor lonely child. Protect us all from the coronavirus. Divine healer, give health to those who are ill.
As I said yesterday, the Pope spoke on the need for an ecological conversion on the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. The Pope said that things require a new way of looking at the Earth, not as a storehouse of resources for us to exploit, but as a sacred gift for sustaining all of humanity. He said that we are called to renew our sense of sacred respect for the earth, for it is not just our home, but also God's home. This should make us all the more aware that we stand on holy ground. In his call for an ecological conversion, Pope Francis is very much making it a matter of faith. He did this almost five years ago when he released his encyclical letter, Laudato Si. And there's a short passage here that I want to read from that we can maybe spend some time reflecting on. It's titled, The Gaze of Jesus. Jesus took up the biblical faith in God the Creator, emphasizing a fundamental truth. God is Father. In talking with his disciples, Jesus would invite them to recognize the paternal relationship God has with all his creatures. With moving tenderness, he would remind them that each one of them is important in God's eyes. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Luke has Jesus saying, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. That's from Matthew's Gospel. The Lord was able to invite others to be attentive to the beauty that there is in the world because he himself was in constant touch with nature, lending it an attention full of fondness and wonder. As he made his way throughout the land, he often stopped to contemplate the beauty sown by his Father and invited his disciples to perceive a divine message in things. Lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for harvest. The kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but once it has grown, it is the greatest of plants. Jesus lived in full harmony with creation, and others were amazed. What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? His appearance was not that of an ascetic set apart from the world, nor of an enemy to the pleasant things of life. Of himself he said, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard. He was far removed from philosophies which despised the body, matter, and the things of the world. Such unhealthy dualisms, nonetheless, left a mark on certain Christian thinkers in the course of history and disfigured the gospel. Jesus worked with his hands in daily contact with the matter created by God, to which he gave form by his craftsmanship. It is striking that most of his life was dedicated to this task in a simple life which awakened no admiration at all. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? In this way, he sanctified human labor and endowed it with a special significance for our development. As St. John Paul II taught, by enduring the toil of work in union with Christ crucified for us, Man, in a way, collaborates with the Son of God for the redemption of humanity. In the Christian understanding of the world, the destiny of all creation is bound up with the mystery of Christ, present from the beginning. All things have been created through him and for him, St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Colossians. The prologue of the Gospel of John reveals Christ's creative work as the divine word, the Logos. But then, unexpectedly, the prologue goes on to say that this same word became flesh. 
one person of the Trinity entered into the created cosmos, throwing in his lot with it, even to the cross. From the beginning of the world, but particularly through the Incarnation, the mystery of Christ is at work in a hidden manner in the natural world as a whole, without thereby impinging on its autonomy. The New Testament does not only tell us of the earthly Jesus and his tangible and loving relationship with the world, it also shows him risen and glorious, present throughout creation by his universal lordship. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This leads us to direct our gaze to the end of time, when the Son will deliver all things to the Father, so that God may be everything to everyone. Thus, the creatures of this world no longer appear to us under merely natural guides, because the Risen One is mysteriously holding them to himself and directing them toward fullness as their end. The very flowers of the field and the birds which his human eyes contemplated and admired are now imbued with his radiant presence. At the end, we will find ourselves face to face with the infinite beauty of God and be able to read with admiration and happiness the mystery of the universe, which with us will share in unending plenitude. Even now, we are journeying toward the Sabbath of eternity, the new Jerusalem, toward our common home in heaven. Jesus says, I make all things new. Eternal life will be a shared experience of all, in which each creature, resplendently transfigured, will take its rightful place and have something to give those poor men and women who will have been liberated once and for all. In the meantime, we come together to take charge of this home which has been entrusted to us, knowing that all the good which exists here will be taken up into the heavenly feast. In union with all creatures, we journey through this land seeking God. For if the world has a beginning, and if it has been created, we must inquire who gave it this beginning, and who was its creator? Let us sing as we go. May our struggles and our concern for this planet never take away the joy of our hope. God who calls us to generous commitment and to give him our all, 
offers us the light and the strength needed to continue on our way. In the heart of this world, the Lord of Light, who loves us so much, is always present. He does not abandon us. He does not leave us alone, for he has united himself definitively to our earth, and his love constantly impels us to find new ways forward. Praise be to him. Please join with our music minister, Michael, as we sing our hymn of praise.
prayer for our earth. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it. That we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey toward your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Christ hidden in the sacrament. During your hidden life, you gave labor a dignity. Restore all those who have lost their jobs. Be with them at this difficult time. 
Grant them peace and comfort. And allow them to return to work as speedily as possible. That the dignity that you gave to labor during your hidden life, they may experience that dignity again as they work to earn their living. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. Health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. And we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Generous God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after one another in these challenging days. Bring healing to those who are sick with the virus and be with their families. May those who have died rest in your eternal embrace. Comfort their family and friends. Strengthen and protect all medical professionals caring for the sick and all who work in our medical facilities. Give wisdom to leaders in health care and governance that they may make the right decisions for the well-being of people. We pray in gratitude for all those in our country who will continue to work in the days ahead in so many fields of life for the sake of us all. Bless them and keep them safe. O God of creation and life, we place ourselves in your protection. May the mantle of your peace enfold us this day and tomorrow. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. May all the saints of God pray for us. Amen.
Loving God, we place, in, we place into your care all our doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers. Give them courage of heart and strength of mind and body. Keep them safe from harm. May they know our deep gratitude for all they are doing to heal and help those affected by the virus. God of all consolation, may they know your protection and peace. Bless them in these challenging days and bless their families. Amen. Eternal God, be with our priests this day as they seek to minister to your people. May you be a guiding and protective presence with them as they bring the consolation and hope of your word and the grace and nourishment of the Eucharist to those entrusted into their care. Grant them the strength of mind and body. Keep them safe to do your will. and Give them the courage and peace to face each day with trust and confidence in you. Into your hands, O God, we commend them. Fill them with your grace and healing. Amen. I invite you now to join us as we sing the Tanta Marigo. You have given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
Let's pray together the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Please join us as we sing our closing hymn. 